Uh, very good afternoon to all our attendees and a good morning to those who are joining from the continent. Welcome to our 32nd webinar in the knowledge sharing series by the India EU project on collaboration for ICT standardization. This is in partnership with TSDSI, the Indian Telecom SDO and Etsy, the European standards body. The webinar's topic today is one M2M smart home, smart building, private sector use case. And we'll dwell on digital services like smart home and smart building requiring open standards for interoperability to manage the many, many devices involved and to so solve the silos concern they are facing as well as the opportunities that are brought by the rise of technologies like artificial intelligence, edge computing and digital twins. The benefit of open standards like 1M2M to address these concerns and opportunities would be dwelt upon in some detail in the presentation and will be illustrated by a smart building use case focusing on interoperability assets of 1M2M and how it has been implemented in a demonstrator showcase during the last Etsy IoT week. Uh, in the schedule today, there will be an introductory speech and a presentation made by our respected moderator, Mr. Sushil Kumar, who is a Deputy Director General IoT from Telecommunication Engineering Center from the Department of Telecommunications uh, on the status of 1M2M in India, followed by a detailed presentation by our speaker, Mr. Sebastian Bolle from Orange, France, and supported by Mr. Premislav Ratushek from Orange of France also. Uh, the question and answer session will follow after Mr. Sebastian Boller's presentation. And as we've all got used to being in online sessions with no contact over the past two years, please do post your uh, questions in the Q&A uh, box there. Uh, as you think of them, you don't have to wait for afterwards. And they'll be taken up by the moderator and addressed by the three panelists uh, after the presentation. So to introduce our speakers first, uh, Mr. Sebastian Bolle is from Orange, France, and he is a researcher in the area of Internet of Things, having graduated from IM, IMT Atlantique in 1992. He joined Orange Innovation to work first on management of wide area networks and related standards, and then on information systems and software architecture products till 2002. From 2003 to 2009, he held various responsibilities in Orange's subsidiaries, namely Euralba for IS and IT services for the B2B market and Almeris for R&D and e-health services. He returned to Orange Innovation in 2010 and since then has been involved in research in IoT. His work and activities are related to open architecture, semantic interoperability, device management, and digital twins for various use cases, namely smart building, logistics, smart home, and network management. He is also involved in collaborative projects like the BIM2 Twin and ASAP, ASAP from source, uh, from uh, open source, where there is the Ellipse Foundation and Pyware and standardization, where we have the IOWN Global Forum and the 1M2M, which we will address here uh, for the smart home vertical. To support him today on the question and answer se session, we have with us. Mr. Shremislav Ratushek from Orange, France, who is an expert in IoT and cloud computing, leading international research projects from the area of Internet of Things and broadly defined cloud computing. He was responsible for cloud API mediation la layer development for EU and AMIA countries, and is currently focused on multi-access edge computing topics and development related with 1M2M, the, o the OM2M, the open source implementation of the Etsy 1M2M standard. Um, now I have the pleasure of introducing our moderator, Mr. Sushil Kumar, who is, as I mentioned, the Deputy Director General in Telecommunication Engineering Center, DOT. Uh, he's an officer of the 1987 batch of the Indian Telecommunication Services and is currently posted as the DDG in Telecommunication Engineering Center and heading the Internet of Things uh, division. He chairs national committees in TEC, um, National Working Group 20 uh, to coordinate with the ITU uh, TSG 20 on IoT in smart cities and communities, and in the Bureau of Indian Standards to coordinate with the ISO uh, IEC uh, Joint Technical Committee on IoT and Digital Twin. He has had the distinction of heading the Indian delegations that participated in the meetings of these international organizations. 
He also chairs TEC Consultative Committee for adoption of 1M2M specifications transposed by TSDSI, resulting in the adoption of 1M2M release 2 as a national standard. Uh, IoT reference architecture re released recently by Bureau of Indian Standards has also referred these TEC standards. So with this introduction, I will hand over the moderation to Ms. and his presentation for his presentation to Mr. Sushil Kumar. Sir, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mukherjee, for a brief introduction about myself. And uh, uh, it's my pleasure and honor uh, to share my views on Internet of Things and the work which has been carried out uh, in TEC uh, in India. And uh, as I, I shall not be going in, uh, into the details of 1M2M, but 1M2M specifications have been adopted as a national standards uh, in India. Uh, these specifications uh, are related with the release to uh, out of uh, 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 17 specifications, uh, this uh, 14 specifications uh, have been adopted as a national standards and some specifications uh, which uh, were uh, basically uh, outdated, uh, they, they have been left. And now we are working on 1M2M release 3 uh, specifications, but uh, related to the uh, smart home and smart cities. Uh, so I shall uh, give an overview of the subject. Uh, this I am uh, from the uh, uh, Telecommunication Engineering Center. It is the technical arm of uh, Department of Telecom and uh, National Standardization Body for Telecom and Related ICT Sector. Uh, TEC has also been designated as a National Inquiry Point for WTO TBT Technical Barrier to Trade for Telecom Sector. Uh, this, uh, uh, as uh, Department of Telecom is the uh, sector member, member states, member states in ITU, uh, in ITU and uh, uh, TEC. Uh, is having the mandate to participate in ITU uh, uh, meetings also. In addition to the meetings of so many other standardization bodies, we participate uh, participate in ETSI, 1M2M, 3GPP, ITPLE, and uh, so many other forums uh, across the globe. And in India, uh, we are having a standardization body like TSDSI and uh, BIS. And uh, uh, TEC is basically the standard setting organization for the, from the government of India. Uh, then uh, TEC is also the designated authority to implement mandatory testing and certification of telecom equipment, MTCTE. We are also in, uh, uh, in talk with the, uh, with the uh, GCF as well as a India EU partnership, for, uh, uh, in India EU partnership for, uh, for establishing a 1M2M testing and certification uh, lab in the country for creating an ecosystem for the uh, for testing of 1M2M elements. Then uh, uh, a designated authority to accredit the caps. Uh, if we uh, see what is a smart home, a smart home, uh, uh, if we see uh, in a uh, standalone mode, uh, we can uh, have uh, so many smart devices within the home, but uh, uh, it is connected with a dashboard and that dashboard is not connected with the outside world. So uh, uh, we can have a standalone automated home. Uh, further, uh, if, uh, if we are having a gateway within the uh, home and that gateway is connected with the uh, wide area network uh, communication technologies, uh, which can be assessed from anywhere across the globe. So uh, then uh, it becomes a smart home. Uh, in the home, we, we shall be having the smart TV, laptop, uh, this uh, uh, then uh, uh, smart meters for the water, gas, or electricity. Uh, then uh, we, we we may have charging stations and uh, so many other services. Uh, we can connect uh, several appliances within the home and those appliances can be monitored or the alert can be sent to the uh, uh, person within the home as well as uh, while on the move anywhere across uh, the uh, globe. So uh, this is uh, the smart home, how the appliances will get connected uh, with the uh, gateway uh, it, uh, that we can have a multi protocol gateways which may have various type of communication technologies. Uh, uh, like uh, in the uh, LAN or uh, HEN, home area network or local area network, we may have Zigbee, Wi-Fi, Hello, Wi-Fi, and uh, 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 Bluetooth, 
and in the, on the well side we uh, we may have the uh, cellular communication technology or the wire technology like uh, fiber to the home connections uh, smart home uh, is an integral part of the smart city and uh, uh, in the smart city we, we will be having so many uh, services and uh, uh, smart home cannot we cannot say it will remain uh, it it will be an isolated entity of the um, uh, entity but it is uh, it is an integral part of the smart city so uh, because uh, uh, the person while on the move or at home uh, has to assess various type of smart services uh, which will be available in these smart cities so uh, uh, this uh, uh, smartphone is a smart device which will work as a, uh, which may also work as a gateway uh, to various applications like in the healthcare uh, or uh, for smart lighting applications uh, within the smart home. Uh, this, uh, uh, why, uh, how, how the things can be made smart. So this is a conceptual uh, picture of machine to machine communication, uh, like a, a device which can have a sensor lighting device or uh, uh, we, we can uh, uh, have a uh, device in the fridge or a smart TV or any other smart device, uh, smart appliances where the smart device will be placed and the uh, transport network and further uh, sending data in real time uh, to the applications. Uh, this is uh, uh, basically the internet of things, the connectivity and the sensors and further uh, transmitting the data and uh, uh, on that data we can have uh, the analytics, big data analytics and uh, other uh, the, uh, to create the intelligence and that intelligence we can use uh, in so many planning and uh, operational activities. So security, privacy, interoperability and economies of scale, these are some of the important items uh, uh, for the successful of the IoT ecosystem. The ITU has defined Internet of Things as a global infrastructure for the information society enabling advanced services by interconnecting physical and virtual things based on existing and evolving interoperable information and communication technologies. Uh, this is the definition defined by uh, ITU for the uh, Internet of Things. And uh, uh, ITU T has created study group 20 in 2015. And on these same lines, India is having national working group 20 uh, to coordinate with ITU T study group 20. So uh, there are uh, some of the important applications uh, uh, of the smart home vertical like video monitoring of home, Security alarm, uh, security and alarm, door control, HVAC control, smart lighting for efficiency, connected appliances, solar lighting system, smart electricity, water and gas metering, etc. But uh, the, within the uh, from the home, the person has to assess various type of services uh, like the uh, 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 to have the information about the vehicles uh, where the person is moving or the, uh, uh, the uh, has to connect. Uh, 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 for various services within the smart city. So uh, in this way, the smart home and smart buildings, they are the integral part of a smart city. Uh, uh, no smart, um, like smart city cannot become a smart without having the smart buildings and the smart homes. So therefore, within in the smart homes, we have to have the smart services as, as well as the uh, high speed and reliable internet services uh, for assessing the various uh, uh, applications. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, automotive, smart manufacturing, e-governance, uh, there are so many uh, services in the IoT applications like healthcare. Healthcare uh, 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 by using the uh, various uh, uh, smart healthcare devices, the person uh, uh, can uh, uh, assess the vital parameters and uh, can transmit to the cloud or to the doctor and such type of things are quite useful during the uh, pandemic like uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, the smart healthcare uh, devices like uh, uh, connected thermometer or connected oximeter, uh, connected ECG machines, uh, they can be used uh, uh, for, for this purpose. Uh, then agriculture, animal husbandry, food processing, CCTV based real-time public safety system, aquaculture, power sector, there are so many uh, things. But uh, uh, like uh, uh, in the case of a smart home, we will be having the smart meters. Uh, smart, uh, smart meters are related to the uh, utility or the power sector also and smart uh, meters for uh, electricity, water and gas, they are also the integral part of the smart home. So this is... Uh, 
like uh, integrated view of a smart home buildings as part of the smart city we can see here in this picture the smart energy smart uh, water buildings mobility smart mobility uh, that is a integral part of the smart city uh, but uh, the the person sitting the, within the home has to assess the smart mobility services also so smart home uh, in this way it becomes uh, an uh, uh, integral in it within a smart city and each home is like a cell within the hive contribution of intelligence uh, uh, to the uh, 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 to this comes uh, from these individual units as a building block uh, this is uh, one of the pictorial view how the devices gets connected so uh, within the red circle uh, uh, these are the devices which will be uh, we should have IPv6 or IPv4. These, are, these should be the IP devices and they are working as a gateway. Like a smartphone is working as a gateway, POS machine is working as a gateway, and uh, uh, this consumer gateway and uh, industrial gateway, and these are uh, having the devices connected on various communication technologies and further uh, 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 Like uh, the, we can skip this slide. Uh, this is the definition of the smart cities, uh, the, the smart sustainable, sustainable city. So uh, that uses ICT and other means to improve quality of life, efficiency of urban operations and services and competitiveness while ensuring that it meets the needs at present and future generations with respect to economic, social, environmental, as well as cultural aspect. So uh, what are the challenges for uh, uh, related to the IoT domain? Uh, this. Uh, uh, some are related to technology, some are related to policy and uh, uh, in between uh, of two circles which are common like standards, interoperability, security, privacy, spectrum and bandwidth. Uh, uh, so uh, actually uh, uh, this, uh, uh, all these things are required to be resolved. This uh, a, a lot of work uh, is in progress in the global standardization bodies like ITU, 1M, 2M, IEEE. Uh, 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 3GPP and so many uh, uh, other uh, smaller standardization bodies which are the part of the other bigger standardization bodies. So uh, uh, this uh, uh, policy related issues are also being resolved uh, within India and also might be being resolved in other countries. So this slide has been taken from the one of the ITU document. Uh, Broad key technologies that is required for the development of IoT, that platform. Platform is one of the most important item. Uh, it should be based on standards, enabling interoperability, scalability, and modularity. And then intelligence, analytics at the uh, uh, gateway, a router, or the mobile network, or multi-edge computing, we can say. Security, low power wireless network, high speed and reliable internet at fixed and mobile devices. Are uh, these analytics at the edge, like uh, uh, some of the analysis uh, within the home, home gateway uh, uh, should be possible uh, so that the alert can be generated there itself. Suppose there is a fire, uh, then um, the fire alerts uh, uh, should be transmitted uh, on the smartphone. If suppose data goes to the cloud and then uh, the intelligence is created there and then from uh, there the intelligence comes uh, to the smartphone of the person, it may uh, get delayed. Uh, or uh, sometimes suppose uh, the connectivity is not available then it may become an issue so uh, this uh, uh, in the critical cases uh, the um, uh, uh, computing at the edge or uh, is required uh, like uh, this was one of the example where uh, we can have the uh, edge computing at the uh, gateway router within the home or suppose in a running train uh, the uh, edge computing is required then low power wireless network and high speed and reliable internet at fixed and mobile devices that is very much required uh, for the successful uh, success of the IoT ecosystem. Uh, this is uh, basically the uh, slide uh, from the ITU. This is smart city platform that is set to be the brain of the city. And uh, 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 if uh, uh, the brain is smart, the smart city will remain smart uh, for a, a long time, not only for the present generation, but it will remain smart even for the future generations also. So uh, a, a smart city, it, it, it is in a big perspective, a smart home, it is in a smaller perspective, a smart home and a smart buildings. But uh, the the, uh, uh, the platforms, if uh, for a smart 
homes and smart buildings suppose they are based on some other uh, uh, specifications like uh, open uh, ocf open connectivity forum then uh, it should have interworking with the uh, uh, standardized platform and at present uh, the standardized platform uh, are available based on 1m to m specifications so uh, no doubt ocf and 1m to m they are already having the interworking and uh, uh, 3gpp and 1m to m uh, are also having interworking cv2x uh, applications um, uh, uh, cv2x technology which will be used for the intelligent transport system that is also coming in release 4 of 1m to m so in this way uh, uh, there is a lot of flexibility will be available uh, in 1m to m whether it is related with the uh, smart homes or the other smart solutions uh, within the city so uh, 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 this is ITU, ITU is having a study group 20, then uh, ITU has released large number of standards uh, 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 from uh, stakeholder engagement to smart city planning, then uh, further uh, related with the smart home uh, also, and uh, uh, sensors, gateways, devices, KPI key performance indicators, and so many other things. And U4SSC, that is the United for Smart Sustainable Cities, uh, that is uh, uh, the body created by ITU and 16 other uh, UN nations. Uh, U4 SSC developed the key performance indicators for smart sustainable cities based on ITU standards. And more than 100 cities across the globe, they are using these standards. Uh, these KPIs to evaluate the smart cities. Uh, 1M2M, uh, this is the webinar on 1M2M. So, uh, everybody might be knowing about 1M2M. So, it, it is also the standardization bodies. Uh, created by ITC, TTEC, ARIB, uh, ATS, TIA, TTA, CCSA, uh, and later on uh, TSDSI uh, is also the partner type one of uh, one M two M. And uh, uh, it was created to create these uh, uh, standards for the common service layer. And one M two M has uh, done a, uh, a great work. They they created uh, the specification like. Uh, 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 release one, it came sometime in 2015, then release two in 2016, release three that came in 2018, and release four, it is expected in this year, and release five work is in progress. So uh, one of the most important thing which I uh, I found in 1M2 that uh, the, these specifications are backward compatible, uh, uh, like uh, uh, 3GPP. So uh, uh, like uh, in uh, uh, Suppose there are two platforms, one, one platform is on release two and another platform in, uh, is on release three, then uh, uh, these two platform will be able to uh, share the uh, data. So uh, this is uh, uh, very, very important and it has been taken care. And uh, similarly, the uh, 1M2M is also having interworking with so many other technologies and standards. So that also uh, uh, gives a lot of uh, importance to 1M2M. So uh, these are some of the standards uh, uh, released by various standardization bodies like ITU, T Study Group 20, ISO, IEC, JTC1, SC41, 1M2M, and uh, IEEE. Uh, this uh, standardization is a collaborative effort, and uh, it is required that all uh, the standardization bodies, whether it is at the national level or international level, uh, they should work together to develop these standards. And the standards should always be the globally harmonized standards, which we should use so that uh, um, uh, the product developed uh, in one country may be used in the other country. Uh, this 1M2M, uh, it is a uh, figure of common service layer, uh, which is very, very important. Like uh, uh, the, uh, it breaks the silos. So uh, uh, this is one of the most important features of the 1M2M. Uh, uh, this common service layer is uh, at present having 14 uh, um, functions like registration, discovery, security, group management, communication management, data management, subscription management, device management, application and service management, network service exposure, location, service charging and accounting, semantics, transaction management. Uh, in the platform, some of the features may be um, are required to be mandated and some may be voluntary uh, depending upon the requirement. Uh, this 1M2M is also having the uh, interworking with the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, standards like OCF, uh, 3GPP, and it is also having uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, interworking with uh, Zigbee uh, and uh, uh, this interworking will be coming with cellular V2X and uh, so many other uh, technologies uh, inter uh, will be possible in future. I, I think uh, the um, uh, 1M2M should increase its horizon and to include uh, most of the technologies and the uh, standards uh, to have the interworking with 1M2M. Uh, we are working on, uh, in IoT domain from the last uh, four to five years and we released 16 technical reports uh, in various verticals. And the outcome of these reports are the part of the policies and the standards and uh, which, uh, uh, which has, uh, which is quite helpful for the creation of uh, uh, ecosystem in the country. Uh, like uh, we released in power sector, intelligent transport system, remote health management, safety and surveillance, then gateway and architecture, uh, M2M numbering resource requirement option, like SIM based devices, we created 13 digit numbering for the SIM based devices and gateways based on this, V2V, V2I radio communication and embedded SIM. Uh, then. Uh, 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 spectrum requirement for PLC and low power RF because uh, uh, in the IoT domain, a uh, large number of devices uh, uh, are to be connected uh, on the low power wireless spectrum. Uh, then ICT deployment and strategy for India is smart city. I am to a IoT enablement in smart homes, then communication technologies in I am to a IoT domain, design and planning. M2M IoT security, then smart village and agriculture, code of practice for securing consumer IoT and emerging communication technologies and use cases in IoT domain. Uh, the document uh, mentioned in uh, serial number 14, 15, 16, uh, they have been released in 2021. Uh, this is uh, uh, the outcome which are the part of the policies and the standards like 13 digit numbering scheme for SIM based devices and gateways, then further the embedded SIM which is uh, which has been mandated in the vehicle location tracking device. Uh, then uh, uh, IPv6 for the smart metering uh, to work on cellular technology, then uh, testing and certification to ensure the safety and uh, security of the IoT devices. It is already mandated. Uh, then uh, common service layer. Uh, this uh, common service layer, uh, it was the uh, actionable item in the document which was released in 2015. Uh, and uh, based on the uh, then further work was carried out and uh, one M2M released two specifications which uh, were transposed by TSBSI as TSBSI is the member of type uh, in one M2M on behalf of DOT and uh, uh, they were DOT and further came to us for uh, adoption and ratification. Then we adopted it as a national standards and uh, these standards will be quite useful for the interoperable ecosystem especially uh, platform for smart cities. Bureau of Indian Standards, that is uh, the standardization bodies uh, in India. Uh, uh, this, they uh, referred all these standards in normative and informative uh, uh, in their document released for IoT reference architecture. And uh, that was submitted to the smart city uh, authorities and they referred in their uh, advisory further uh, for uh, these smart city platforms to be used. Uh, then uh, uh, the uh, spectrum for low power RF, uh, this uh, one megahertz has been released recently, the licensing for non-cellular LP1 services. The LoRa SIGFOX, they are quite important uh, in the non-cellular domain, uh, just like uh, NBIoT and LTMTC. So this, uh, uh, these are also being deployed in India. Uh, then uh, uh, cellular V2X will be a very important uh, 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 technology for the intelligent transport system. And it is uh, uh, this uh, 5.9 gigahertz uh, uh, for B2B, uh, B2B and uh, applications, B2B and B2P ap applications, this uh, uh, spectrum in 5.9 gigahertz band will be required. So uh, this a number of trials are going on, but uh, uh, as far as 1M2M is concerned, 1M2M, is also, uh, also coming in release for, for interworking between us, uh, CV2X and 1M2M. So therefore the platforms which have been deployed or with, uh, based on 1M2M or with, uh, which are under deployment on release two and release three, they will not face any problem for implementing CV2X. Um, so Shil, sir, if I may interrupt, yeah. uh, if you, it's uh, you, uh, how long, how much longer would you take? 
I, I think four five years. Uh, we need to wrap up, please, also yeah. for the next. Thank weekend. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Sir. Uh, then, uh, uh, use case. Uh, these are some of the contributions uh, uh, submitted in ITU and uh, ITU in ITU uh, two recommendations. Why supplement fifty three? This connected smart homes was there. Uh, then a smart city recommendation was also there. Then uh, uh, we are having a IoT experience center uh, in TEC and uh, some of the smart home related uh, uh, applications are available here and they work in real time. Uh, then uh, uh, this uh, mandatory testing and certification also exists in India. Uh, this In the smart home scenario, we can connect most of the devices uh, uh, like uh, uh, on short range communication technologies uh, or also directly on the uh, WAN communication technologies. So the smart home uh, use case uh, in Y supplement uh, 53, that is quite uh, important. and. Uh, uh, this is the pictorial view of the healthcare I have included because uh, this healthcare, uh, smart healthcare is also the part of the smart home. Uh, this is uh, uh, also how the uh, devices will work on various communication technologies. Uh, this is, uh, we can have various type of uh, uh, devices and uh, uh, to monitor the vital parameters of, uh, of, uh, of the individual. If the person knows uh, what is the BP or the sugar, then the people will change their lifestyle and try to remain fit. Uh, this is uh, some of the related with the automotive and uh, uh, security is a big challenge in the IoT domain and uh, uh, this consumer IoT devices. Uh, uh, um, uh, for consumer IoT devices based on ETSI standards, we have uh, released a code of practice uh, uh, and uh, uh, how, to, how these devices can be uh, secured and the vulnerability can be addressed by the manufacturer. So this we can skip. Uh, uh, from there, uh, three uh, these three items are very very important. You see, uh, uh, in the IoT devices, uh, the manufacturer generally uh, give same type of user ID and password. So uh, it is required to uh, voluntary uh, accept or mandate. Uh, these can be made mandated, like no universal default password. Every device should have different passwords then implement a means to manage reports of vulnerability. If uh, suppose uh, uh, some camera or some uh, uh, some other device or Fitbit device that, that generates vulnerability, then it, it is required to manage. Then uh, uh, manufacturers uh, doesn't have the, uh, they don't have any means to manage the uh, reports of vulnerabilities. Then keep software updated. Uh, this is also uh, the uh, required. So these three uh, key items are required to be implemented for the uh, secure ecosystem in the IoT domain. These are some of the consumer IoT security guidelines based on ETS, ETSI standards uh, 303-645. Uh, this, uh, this is the from the waste management where the uh, home can have the QR code and uh, uh, the uh, vehicle goes to collect the garbage and uh, read the QR code from the smartphone. So this, uh, 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 how we can keep the smart home is smart uh, 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 until unless we are uh, not having other verticals smart. So we have to keep all the verticals smart. So this is uh, some sort of a smart living. Uh, this is uh, connected with the uh, villages. Uh, we have to keep the smart homes or uh, in villages also we have uh, to provide minimum uh, at least uh, some of the services which are available in the cities like telehealth or uh, uh, teleeducations which are very very important in the pandemic time uh, then uh, in the this is related to the agriculture uh, then uh, you see what is important technical interoperability and standards they are very very important for the uh, uh, proliferation and development of the iot ecosystem and uh, one mpm has done uh, a really a, a great job and uh, uh, by providing interoperable uh, solutions and it is uh, also required that the interworking between one mpm compliant solution and non one mpm platform should also exist and so uh, uh, on this uh, the further religious uh, work or uh, some thing may be coming uh, by developing the proxy or uh, other things. Then uh, 
our data privacy, data localization, availability of network address, cross-border traffic, these are some of uh, the more important items uh, uh, related with the uh, development of the IoT ecosystem. This slide uh, we can skip. And uh, this is some of the uh, survey which was done uh, related with the smart cities. As uh, we know, a smart home and smart cities are interrelated. So I thought to have this slide, this is the last slide. And uh, uh, further, uh, I will say open standards and interoperability, they are the key to resilience, sustainable and scalable growth of the IoT verticals. And smart infrastructure, not only in vertical, in one vertical, but in all the verticals of uh, uh, the daily life. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sushil Kumar. Uh, I would request Mr. Sebastian Bole uh, to please give his presentation. Thank you. Hello, um, Sebastian Bole from Orange. Um, I'm very pleased to, to do this talk uh, today. Um, so with uh, Premislav, we will uh, present you uh, some uh, topics we are working on, on the smart building, smart home, and more generally uh, IoT. Uh, we are part of the research activities at Orange, uh, and we are working in a research domain uh, called the Cyber Physical Universe. Uh, so what is cyber physical universe or what are cyber physical systems? I guess you know that some examples are uh, smart buildings, smart cities, uh, smart homes also, of course, uh, meaning systems uh, which are mixing uh, both uh, physical aspects and digital aspects. Okay, so for today, my agenda, the agenda, is the following. So yes, we will focus on smart home and smart building. And we will deep, uh, we'll dig also in uh, additional topics. Uh, uh, we, we, which were part also of the presentation of uh, Mr. Kumar. So that's great to see uh, and good news that uh, we will see some common uh, messages and common point of views regarding IoT. Uh, so we will dig also in other uh, topics and also uh, topics for the future like uh, artificial intelligence and edge computing because uh, as we are working in research on our side for sure we are also uh, studying uh, let's say new technologies or new architectures for the for the future um, so what about smart building and smart home uh, today? So as already introduced by the uh, talk of uh, by Mr. Kumar, uh, for sure there are silo concerns in, in smart home. So in all these uh, smart uh, star services, uh, we can say that smart home is in itself uh, a vertical, but Inside this vertical, there is, well, there, there is also a lot of verticals, like uh, entertainment, uh, security, safety, lightning, energy management, etc. And the pain today is uh, that we have, uh, if we want, somebody wants to have uh, several of these services, he will need for sure to have uh, one solution per vertical with no interoperability or very few interoperability and lack of interaction. So the current situation is that the user, the end user has to deal with the complexity and that's a situation which uh, slows uh, the adoption. And we, we have the same situation in smart building uh, with uh, even more complexity uh there are more verticals and more uh, technical aspects in a building uh, to to deal with and not only uh, technical uh, we have also to uh, manage the user satisfaction the building user satisfaction um, and there are also uh, uh, 
uh, in smart building domain uh, demands related to uh, regulations which uh, do not exist it in the smart home uh, domain and that brings uh, an increased uh, com complexity and finally uh, there is a lack of collaboration between technical teams managing uh, a, a, a building and this is really uh, a pain uh, and um, we we think that uh, thanks to digitalization uh, we can bring an IoT and uh, digital uh, architecture we can bring a huge source of improvement in uh, the management of smart buildings uh, uh, and we will see on the next slide how this can be uh, possible of course for this we need uh, iot standards these standards are needed for uh, cross fertilizing the iot data silos which exist today and uh, this cross fertilizing uh, will uh, enable uh, services uh, which are not possible today due to these uh, silos. So few examples of such kind of services, uh, for example, in the home, uh, smart home, uh, contextual adaptation of multimedia services in the entertainment domain and in the energy uh, domain, uh, having some service on uh, energy efficiency. Uh, and in the building, we can uh, have uh, the example of uh, the comfort services with the usage of uh, temperature and humidity sensors, and also this uh, energy efficiency uh, service, because for sure, uh, regarding sustainability, uh, improving uh, the energy efficiency in systems like uh, smart buildings and smart homes uh, is, uh, is a big challenge but uh, important challenge to reduce uh, the global uh, energy footprint. Okay, and so at the end, uh, we need to leverage on these shared environment models. And uh, as Mr. Kumar said, the, uh, the, the, the vision is to enable a seamless IoT, um, mixing or interconnecting a smart home, smart building, smart city, and other smart kind uh, uh, of services. Okay, and, we, and regarding the next relevant technologies for smart home and smart buildings, so edge computing is for sure a new paradigm that will impact these uh, smart uh, domains and not, on, not only for the lat latency requirements, which are often pushed when we, when we speak of edge computing. Edge computing can also bring uh, solutions for uh, unreliable connectivity uh, situation or architecture. Edge computing can also bring some solution for security concerns and, uh, for example, uh, data uh, privacy. Edge computing can also contribute to more cost-effective solution by, for example, reducing some network uh, usage of some uh, networks because we stay we, we are able to 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 uh, perform uh, local processing without any uh, additional network communication and also edge computing can be maybe for a, a more future uh, view uh, can bring uh, features to uh, in, um, uh, improve interoperability and uh, extension of uh, legacy objects uh, in the concept of what we call uh, augmented objects, so the capacity to bring additional features to an existing object, to an existing object, thanks to uh, uh, edge computing. And another uh, important uh, and new enabler is, of course, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we can see as a possible accelerator for smart building and smart home. Um, for, and for example, artificial intelligence uh, may be useful to uh, enable um, uh, more relevant and proactive services uh, thanks to artificial intelligence. Because today, the solutions which are proposed are based on simple and static scenarios to, to automate some uh, uh, yes, the scenarios in the smart home or the smart building. 
And for this, artificial intelligence can bring uh, additional uh, uh, automation mechanisms. Uh, and uh, we believe that uh, uh, artificial intelligence will enable to uh, to, 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 to go to uh, what we call bene, bene, benevolent building and home. So uh, a digital system which will be able to take care of you uh, thanks to uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, and uh, one uh, vision we have also in research is that uh, we will need or it will be uh, a benefit to mix uh, edge computing and artificial intelligence to go towards what we call embedded and, di and distributed also artificial intelligence, which will enable uh, uh, additional uh, features and capabilities uh, in, the, in, in the IoT uh, platforms, IoT services, and bring more uh, contextual uh, uh, capabilities. So as the, the processing will be performed locally, as the analysis also will be performed locally, uh, close to the, to the users, uh, these uh, uh, systems will be able to have a better understanding of the behaviors or of the needs of the of the users, and then bring a more uh, relevant uh, services and features. Uh, and so, in summary, uh, why do we need, or why would we need, embedded and distributed uh, artificial intelligence? Because it can bring uh, reliability and resilience. Uh, uh, because we are not uh, 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 the solution is not based on a unique and centralized cloud uh, platform. Uh, there are some processing which are dis distributed and close to the users, which uh, for sure bring a more resilience. The services uh, can be uh, more responsive and more relevant because we have a better uh, knowledge of the of the context. And also, it can bring a simplified management of the of the architecture. Uh, also, and to conclude on the future uh, part, uh, digital twin also may be also uh, a new approach uh, uh, interesting in the management of these uh, cyber physical systems, cyber physical world, by bringing a digital representation of the smart building, smart home. But also smart city, etc. Uh, so a digital twin is such a virtual representation, uh, enabling uh, um, uh, knowledge and uh, contextual information, contextual knowledge about uh, the physical, the cyber physical uh, system. So having this contextual information, knowing that, uh, for example, such uh, sensor. Uh, located in such room of the building, in such uh, environment, uh, will bring uh, 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 a better, a more, uh, uh, a more fine-grained information than just uh, a raw data coming from a temperature sensor. We will be able to have a better analysis of this raw data by taking into account the contextual information uh, brought by the uh, digital twin. Uh, another thing I would like to focus on is device management. And as uh, Mr. Kumar said, uh, this uh, kind of feature is important for, for example, security reason, because device management is composed of uh, four main uh, global features, which are uh, the uh, capacity to provision services on uh, IoT uh, devices, uh, the capacity to bring assistance uh, to users to track what is happening in on the uh, device uh, fl fleet and also of course all these maintenance aspects uh, for example updated firmware software uh, updated the configuration etc so device management is not new it is a topic it is a feature uh, that, has, that has been uh, driven uh, in the past by the first uh, deployment of, of, of uh, smart uh, services. So uh, mainly uh, smart home in the first uh, deployment uh, 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 done by the 
telecom operators, but also the uh, cable operators in the US. And the, the device management uh, uh, um, uh, um, was firstly used to manage uh, the uh, devices like uh, the internet gateways in the home or the set-top boxes also in the home. But of course, with uh, IoT, uh, there, is, uh, there will be uh, more uh, devices and more uh, kind of services to manage uh, with device management. Device management is not uh, an option. It is an important uh, aspect of IoT uh, for economical, economical aspect because it uh, prevents to send uh, technician uh, to the premises of the customer for uh, environmental also aspects because thanks to device management, we can uh, imagine to have a better sharing of the, of the, of the devices. And also regarding business uh, aspects, because uh, uh, we can imagine solutions uh, open to third, party, uh, to third parties and have also some uh, common and a shared inf infrastructure between partners for uh, device management. Uh, and device management, for device management, the reality is the same as uh, for the services uh, side of uh, smart home and smart building. Uh, we have also this uh, silo situation with several existing solutions uh, coming from a standard standardization uh, bodies like uh, Broadband Forum, uh, OMA, uh, the Open Mo Mobile Alliance, etc., and also uh, proprietary solutions. And we need also to have this uh, federated view of the device management to uh, enable uh, the, the, uh, the IoT. And also because uh, IoT will bring uh, 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 new challenges. Uh, 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 for example, uh, as also Mr. Kumar said, we will have more dynamic environments a more uh, uh, and also more complex architectures to manage and uh, for that we will need we need new architectures we need more federated architectures for uh, device management and so that's the conclusion in fact <laughs> the, on the the slide uh, uh, you currently see uh, on the screen uh, we need to uh, go from the existing paradigm, which is uh, very centralized and not able to scale up uh, regarding uh, the IoT uh, challenges to a more federative uh, approach for uh, device management, uh, taking also into account uh, the, um, the benefit of uh, technologies like uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, so regarding 1M2M, uh, I will not uh, uh, go in uh, generalities. Uh, you know uh, 1M2M, and we have we had also some uh, introduction by uh, Mr. Kumar. I, I just want to do a focus on uh, smart device templates, which is the abstraction layer uh, proposed by uh, uh, 1M2M to uh, improve interoperability. And uh, uh, this uh, SDT, smart device template, is also one of the um, uh, important aspect of the interoperability layer uh, proposed by 1M2M and uh, what we call the interworking uh, interworking uh, uh, capabilities of uh, of 1M2M so smart device template uh, allow to uh, 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 describe specify uh, devices uh, and, and the different aspects of the devices, so uh, the properties uh, exposed uh, by the devices, the actions exposed by the devices, uh, the notifications the devices is able to send uh, by uh, defining uh, uh, an abstraction view of these devices. And this uh, definition rely on this uh, meta model I will not uh, uh, detail, but uh, the main uh, uh, things you you have to uh, to have in mind is that this meta, meta model uh, allows so this uh, the definition of this abstraction layer in a, a modular way so we are able to thanks to sdt to define uh, what we call module classes uh, uh, defining uh, the different features of the devices 
uh, to assemble them to uh, uh, provide a description of uh, full description of devices. And so this uh, re reusability of uh, these uh, modules, module classes, is also an important aspect of the SDT uh, proposition. Just to give an example, so these uh, uh, definition specification of modules and devices are uh, available in the uh, 1M2M specification, the TS23, uh, the SDT-based information model and mapping uh, for vertical industries. So it provides definition for modules, uh, more than 100 and uh, devices, around uh, uh, 70 uh, devices for uh, multiple verticals like uh, city, health, home, industry, uh, transportation uh, uh, currently. So of course, all contribution to this uh, specification is, is welcome to extend the catalog of devices and of uh, available devices and modules. And below, just an example, what this uh, definition of uh, uh, device and module is. Here we have the definition of a light device with the different uh, module defined in TS23 which are used to uh, to specify a, di uh, a light a light device and uh, on the right the an example of one of this module the color module of the of the uh, of the light device uh, specifying the different attributes uh, of the of this module and to make the link with uh, what i presented also on device management we are currently pushing uh, or working on a work item, a new work item in uh, 1M2M uh, uh, for device management with SDT. So this uh, uh, work item is pushed by Orange with other uh, partners. And the goal is to uh, enable also uh, modules uh, for device management that the same uh, we, we can compose uh, in, a, in a device definition uh, to uh, uh, to model and uh, represent these uh, management features of a device uh, in a in a co coherent and homogeneous uh, SDT smart device template uh, representation. So here again, as an example, uh, um, example of exist uh, of one existing uh, already specified module. So what we call the device management device management agent. Uh, with a different here uh, um, uh, example of uh, action, which are uh, uh, exposed by uh, uh, the device management agent. And on the, the right, the so for example, the reboot uh, action or the deploy package, the cap capability to deploy software on the, on the device. And on the right, uh, example of properties exposed by, uh, by, by a device here, a different information of the uh, storage, uh, uh, power status, uh, CPU usage of, of, of the device. And so, uh, to uh, go towards the conclusion of my uh, of my uh, talk, uh, just let's let's just have a look on the smart building use case or one smart building use case in action. We uh, um, uh, we worked on uh, at uh, Orange uh, Research. Uh, so this use case is a use case uh, uh, showcased at the last HC IoT week uh, about uh, the management of uh, inventories in a smart building. Uh, so in this use case, you will find uh, all the uh, ingredients, all the elements I uh, presented before. Uh, 1M2M, uh, device management, uh, smart device template, uh, artificial intelligence, edge, edge computing, and also digital twin. Uh, so uh, what is the use case? Uh, of course, uh, inventory is a, crit a critical process in building uh, for managing a building, but uh, it is a, uh, well, not so funny uh, task and also very expensive because it, we need to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, a uh, lot, lot of people, or at least uh, human resources, to, to perform this task. And uh, the, the consequence is that inventories are never up to date. 
And of course, we believe that digitalization uh, application, uh, di digitalized system can help in auto auto automatizing uh, such uh, low uh, added value task so, uh, by mixing artificial intelligence, uh, use, use edge computing uh, in a conjunction with a cloud for, uh, for sure. And also why not some uh, uh, automated vehicles like uh, robots or drones. Uh, but of course, uh, such a digitalized inventory system uh, needs also to be managed because uh, this is a complex system that uh, need to be uh, orchestrated. Um, so that, that's what we uh, developed, uh, designed and developed in uh, this uh, demonstrator. And here's the architecture, where again, you saw all the elements I presented before. Uh, 1M2M as the orchestrator of the building uh, inventory uh, system to manage it. Uh, different uh, 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 connector, and a federated view of the system thanks to the use of a smart device template and the interworking, uh, interworking feature of 1M2M and uh, 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 device management features uh, to uh, 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 manage the devices and mainly the robot uh, in charge of uh, performing uh, the inventory of the of the building, and uh, this robot uh, and the process processing task uh, perform, performed by the robot uh, are based on artificial artificial intelligence with some of the processing uh, uh, hosted in uh, age uh, nodes. Um, okay, uh, so also I benefit from the presentation also to introduce a digital twin platform we have used in this uh, in this um, uh, demonstrator. So this platform is a research platform developed by Orange. The name of the platform is uh, Singing the Future, and in short, uh, Singing uh, uh, enables uh, the management of digital twins uh, based on the uh, graph uh, graph modeling uh, of the physical world. Uh, so a graph is simply a node uh, uh, with uh, uh, edges uh, to, uh, to to link uh, them. Uh, but uh, it is important to understand that this graph, this uh, nodes and links uh, uh, composing uh, the graph brings uh, the contextual information we need uh, to know uh, with which uh, objects, with which uh, elements of the, of the system, a device or uh, a room of the building is in relation with. And thanks to this, we are able to say that this uh, temperature sensor, which is located in such room of the building, we are able to know that in, the, in, in this room of the building, there were such and such uh, objects able to produce uh, some uh, heat that they are in uh, such a status of uh, heat production. And this contextual information can explain why we received such uh, high value uh, from the temperature sensor. Uh, okay, so we implement uh, this uh, demonstrator just this, uh, um, this uh, schema drawing show, gives you some um, additional technical details. But here is just to mention that uh, we implement, we have implemented this uh, demonstrator on the open source implementation of Qualm 2 m uh, Eclipse OM2M. And uh, also to share with you that uh, Orange is, uh, in this implementation, uh, the main developer of uh, what is needed to uh, uh, use uh, uh, SDT, Smart Device Template, and, and TS23 uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 1M2M, so Flex Container, and uh, also, of course, uh, the implementation of the specification TS23 in, the, in Eclipse 1 to one But also on this aspect, uh, contributions are also welcome 
to the uh, open source uh, project Eclipse uh, OM to M. Okay, so the demonstration itself, I will not show it uh, today. Uh, uh, it is uh, still available on the uh, Etsy portal if you want to uh, have a look uh, for the first time or again uh, to it. But you will see this little robot in action uh, as I present as I presented uh, previously, managed by the one m 2 m uh, platform as well as the other elements of the architecture, uh, uh, management interface to uh, uh, manage uh, the deployment of the software, the needed software on, on the robot, and the different uh, artificial intelligence capabilities uh, to recognize uh, the different objects in the room of the building and to po position them in, uh, let's say, a digital twin representation of the of the building. So I come to my uh, final conclusion and the three takeaways I, I wanted, I would like to share with you today. Uh, so first, of course, that all these smart uh, home building city use cases are today very siloed and uh, require interoperability to federate, to cross-fertilize, uh, and also to, to go through this uh, seamless IoT I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation. And as uh, Mr. Kumar said, uh, so that uh, smart home, uh, smart building, and uh, smart city as, uh, um, uh, are somehow uh, interconnected be between, th between them and uh, shape a global uh, a global system. And for this, of course, uh, 1M2M offers the needed uh, and standardized uh, service layer for that. We, we need also to prepare the future because uh, these uh, use cases will benefit from new technologies like edge computing, artificial intelligence, digital twin, as I said. And for this, 1M2M is uh, preparing the future uh, with new work items on uh, artificial in, uh, embedding artificial intelligence in a 1M2M system, and also uh, edge computing, uh, evolu um, integrating edge computing architecture in, uh, in 1M2M architecture. And finally, uh, yes, these uh, smart home building, et cetera, use cases uh, will, real, will rely on uh, uh, very complex architectures because uh, themselves are complex. Uh, these are complex uh, use cases and uh, we need a strong management uh, feature in uh, such, for such uh, systems uh, unless, as uh, also Mr. Kumar said, we will face some security issues because, uh, for example, the software on the devices of the, soft, the software on the different elements of, uh, of the architecture will not be uh, up to date and will uh, expose some uh, uh, security uh, breaches. So for this also, 1M2M uh, is working on, on this topic and is uh, preparing improvements uh, of these man management features to face uh, these uh, challenges. So thanks. That's uh, all for for me and for this uh, presentation. Thank you for your attention, and we will be happy to to answer your your questions. Sushilji, you hear me? Do you still yes. hear me? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Um, hello, uh, Mr. Sebastian. One question from my side, uh, Sushil Kumar. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when you expect uh, one one M two M release four and release five to be published. Uh, um, I'm not sure to have uh, in mind uh, uh, to have the the the, the 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 schedule in mind. Um, I don't know if my colleague uh, uh, Cyril is maybe on the call and could maybe uh, give the, the information and in the in the chat. But uh, uh, to be honest, I don't have the the, the planning in mind uh, right now. But of course, I can uh, check with uh, my uh, uh, colleague in the 1M2M uh, working groups and give you the information later.
okay no issue thanks uh, this uh, aiot uh, this uh, uh, you mentioned this artificial intelligence at the edge uh, so yeah. this will be the were uh, uh, this will be the feature of the platform uh, in one m2m um I, I, I guess so. I, I mean, uh, currently, this is uh, uh, an ongoing uh, work item. Uh, we, uh, on, on Orange side, we we okay. we have the conviction that we need such uh, yes distributed architecture and uh, uh, capability also to distribute the artificial intelligence algorithm. So uh, that's the vision we have, and for sure we will. Uh, Work to uh, bring uh, contribution on this topic in the in the Wallem to M forum and uh, in this uh, work item. Okay, right. Thank you. So we must thank Mr. Cyril Barrow. He has mentioned that release four is to come soon, and release five is in an early stage. He's put that in the chat. Um, I think that would be oh, information for everyone, sir. Um, yeah. uh, if, we'd be happy to take any questions from the audience, uh, from people attending, if there are any more questions. And I, I saw also question about uh, possibility to to have the, the support or yeah, for sure on my side there is no no issue so I will be very happy to to share the the slides uh, after the the webinar. So thank you. Um, I uh, could I ask a question if nobody else is asking a question. Um, um, maybe uh, it would be posed to both uh, Mr. Sushil Kumar and uh, Mr. Sebastian Bolle on. Uh, in in both uh, sides, Europe and India, um, be, in India we have the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, and they are, have, are working very uh, strongly on updating their national building code to uh, uh, take care of the latest technologies in the uh, field of ICT, because um, from 2G to 3G to 4G to 5G, the gaps are narrowing now, and they're seeing that people are already talking about 6G, for example. And um, the issue of standards had come up in this discussion. And uh, they can't mandate standards, but they are stipulating that some sort of uh, standard be followed. How is it uh, to Sebastian, uh, be, you know, the, the concept of standards with your housing and urban uh, uh, development, civil uh, ministries being taken and handled over there? And secondly, to Mr. Sushil Kumar, what is the work that perhaps we are doing with Mahua here in India? So if I could ask Sebastian first to give us a little feedback on Europe on this side. Yes. Um, so in Europe, there are, uh, so in Europe and in France, uh, more specifically, uh, yes, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, initiatives to standardize uh, in smart building domain um, and uh, also in the context of uh, more uh, sustainable uh, buildings. So yes, to standardize uh, and to, uh, 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 to, uh, to, uh, to bring uh, uh, specification for uh, ready to service, uh, wh what they call ready to service uh, services, to so to standardize uh, and to uh, ease the deployment of digital services inside uh, inside buildings, uh, also on the uh, energy uh, energy efficiency uh, side, and uh, mainly in France uh, there is a, uh, let's say a standardization body uh, called uh, a Smart Building Alliance, uh, Smart Building Alliance for Smart Cities, because they want also to uh, yes to influ influence the smart city domain. And they, they are recently they published uh, several documents, uh, standardization document for the smart building domain. You know, so so th th there is a, a, a strong push uh, in the smart building domain in France and Europe to, to standardize and to uh, take into account uh, digitalized uh, systems in, uh, in, in smart buildings. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sushil Kumar, um, please, if you could also. Uh, have yeah, me. this uh, National Building Code, uh, uh, they are in the purview of Bureau of Indian Standard, but uh, 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 
related to fiber to the home system ftts uh, this uh, uh, was released sometime in 2015 uh, by uh, pis and uh, uh, mr ak mittal who was the senior dgtvc uh, he was uh, associated uh, with the uh, with this work so the uh, there is a uh, complete one section how to lay the optical fiber cable in the buildings which have already come or in the new buildings this uh, fiber to the home uh, should be laid but uh, uh, these uh, uh, these standards are voluntary and uh, it all depends upon the uh, concerned ministry to mandate it from the is side it is not mandated thank you um I guess, uh, I hope everybody could see the chat. Uh, Mr. Roland, her, her partner has given a further clarification, uh, saying one M2M release for is being finalized. The technical content is final and the specifications are currently undergoing last editorial changes. The ratification is expected in uh, uh, HY2020 uh, this year. Um, so, and the one M2M release is currently in the uh, stage one phase and is open for new use cases and requirements. This requirements phase will be followed by the architecture and protocol development, finalizing, uh, finalization expected end of 2023. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Roland. So that's the final word on that. And uh, if there are no more questions, um, then I would say thank you uh, to the speakers, um, to Mr. Sushil Kumar for his moderation. Thank you, sir and Mr. Sebastian Bolle and Shemislav Ratushek for their inputs and uh, uh, very interesting presentations. Thank you so much. Uh, we would be uh, uploading this recording, as you've seen, we're recording the uh, event and we would be putting it up on our webinar. Um, Andreas has very kindly given the uh, uh, webinar link on the chat. And uh, if anybody is interested, my details are there when we were sending out the invites, you could get in touch with me and I could share them. Uh, Sebastian has kindly agreed to share his presentation. We will try and reach it across to you. And I would request if Mr. Sushil Kumar could share his presentation, we would share sure. that. Uh, I shall send to you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. With that, I say thank you to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you all thank for you. your time. You're welcome. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank the you. invitation also. A pleasure. Thank you. Thank you that you could give a presentation. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Nice Thank you day. very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.